Okay, hello everyone. In today's episode, we will be looking at curve properties, and this will be spread out over multiple episodes, but uh, we're going to get started on some of the fundamental basics today. So uh, we're going to be looking at sine diagrams, that's going to be the main idea behind some of the curve properties, uh, and obviously this kind of sine diagram, not that kind of sine when I'm talking about sine and sine. Uh, just to clarify things, it's obviously not a trigonometric ratio or a trigonometric value. So uh, let's get started, shall we, and have a look at some of the fundamental concepts of what happens to the derivative as we go across the curve. So I'll just clear off some space here, sort of seeing what a sine, diagrams look, sine diagram looks like. So now on to a few ideas. And uh, when the dy over dx, the derivative, is greater than zero, then obviously the slope is increasing. Hopefully you should be aware of that by now. The derivative represents a gradient at a given point. So if I were to have a function that looks something like that, then essentially we'd have a tangent line coming off it somewhere, and if we were to survey at that point, we would have a positive slope. The dy over dx would be greater than zero, because of course the dy over dx is the slope. And if we were to survey it, say, down here, we can see that it's negative because it has a negative y-step and a positive x-step, and a positive and a negative, of course, make a negative, so the dy over dx would, of course, be less than zero. So when the dy over dx is less than zero, the slope is decreasing. And the dy over dx, again, just a derivative, something you should be familiar with from the previous unit of differential calculus. So now, there's one last rule that we need to go through, and this is quite an interesting one. And uh, let's think, what happens when the dy over dx is equal to zero? And you would probably say, well obviously the t slope of the tangent line, the gradient to that point, is going to be a flat line. The slope of the tangent will be zero because it is a flat one. So what happens when the dy over dx is zero is that we have what's called a stationary point. And the stationary point could be a minima, it could be a maxima, it could be a uh, horizontal inflection. And I'll go through what some of these look like now. But those are some few. Uh, those are just a few rules that you should be familiar with when it comes to curve properties. Just a couple of ideas about the derivative and what the derivative means in context to a curve. So uh, I'll go through stationary points now. And stationary points. Uh, let's have a couple of examples. Well, let's say we had a quadratic. Then that would obviously be a maxima. And the derivative, the slope of the tangent line, would of course be zero at that point. As you can see there, it'd be a flat line. No change in y, no change in x. Then we have a minima, for example. And that's another stationary point. There's no change, there's no rate of change. And then we can have a horizontal inflection. And this is an interesting one compared to the others. Because with our maxima, we're changing, we have a positive slope here, but we're changing to a negative slope on the other side. With a minima, we have a negative slope, and we're changing into a positive slope. With a horizontal inflection, we have a negative slope, and we still have a negative slope. It doesn't change direction, and we can have it round the other way as well. So that's another horizontal inflection, but it's a positive one because you can see it's increasing there, and it's increasing there as well, in terms of the slope. So, because of this, when we find where the dy over dx equals zero for a function, we'll end up with any one of these. And from that, a sine diagram, which is essentially just a flat line, looks at, let's say this point is two, zero. Well, if it's two there, then we can see that, okay, it's a positive slope there and a negative slope there. And from that, we can see that, okay, this is obviously going to be a maxima. That's essentially what a sine diagram tells us. It tells us what's happening to the function in terms of its slope. But uh, because if 
in context we don't actually know that we're finding a minima or a maxima, then it can be a little bit difficult. We may not know if it's positive or negative, because we could have a horizontal inflection in which it doesn't change it. So it could be positive and positive, or it could be a negative and a negative. And that's where we actually just use a bit of algebra to be able to back up our claims and think, okay, what's happening to the curve? What's happening to our function? And that leads us on to a couple of questions that we can look at. And I'll probably be able to get through the first one in this part of the video. So hopefully everything's going okay so far. We just know that a stationary point is when the dy of a dx equals zero, because it's stationary, there's no change happening at that point. And uh, we know that, obviously, if it's a positive dy of a dx, it's greater than zero, then it's going to be increasing, the gradient's going to be increasing, and if it's less than zero, it's going to be decreasing. If you've got those ideas in your head, then you're off to a good start so far. So now, curve properties. And let's say we wanted to find where it was increasing and decreasing for a function. So uh, I've actually got an example here. Negative two, uh, x to the 2, so x squared, negative x squared, plus 6x plus 18. And what the question asks us to do with that is it wants to find out for which values of x is it increasing and which values of x is it decreasing. So again, we'll be using the derivative to be able to work this out because the derivative tells us what's happening to the slope, doesn't it? So now, uh, what we can actually find out, and if you know the basic rules of polynomials, we know that negative x squared, because the a term, which is negative 1 here, uh, the terms a, b, and c just being the coefficients, but our a term, negative 1, means that we're going to end up with something like this, a concaving shape because positive a, a positive a term, will lead to that. So we already sort of have an idea about whether it's increasing or decreasing, but we do need to confirm using sign diagrams, because, of course, having that mathematical proof there, rather than just going off this concept, although the concept is correct, also adds validity to our argument, validity to our reasoning. And at the end of the day, validity is what we need. We need to be able to back up our claims in mathematics so they can't be disputed. Okay, so now, first thing we would do is we would find the derivative, of course, because that's the thing that tells us about the slope. So the dy over dx, so delta y over delta x, the derivative, equals, and we bring that coefficient down to the front, 2 times by our coefficient term of negative 1, makes negative 2, and then it's x, and it's x to the 1, because we subtract 1 from our exponent. And then it's plus, and we have a constant multiplied by x, so the derivative of this would just be the constant, because that's x to the 1, so 6 times 1, exponent times the coefficient, 6, and then it's x to the power of 0. And anything to the power of zero, with the exception of zero, of course, is just going to be one. So six times one is six. Now, from this, we want to be able to set the derivative to zero, because this will find a stationary point. And at the stationary point, it's possible for there to be a change in whether it's increasing or decreasing in terms of our original function. Remember that? You may remember the horizontal inflection, so it may not change at all, either. So now, again, 0 equals negative 2x plus 6, and because the, uh, our original function was a second-degree polynomial, we go down to a linear equation when we take the derivative, because remember, we lose 1 from our exponent using the power rule there. Well, uh, because this is going to be a linear equation, it means there's only going to be one value of x, so that means that there's only going to be one stationary point. It's only going to be one x value where our gradient, or the slope of the tangent, is going to be equal to zero. If it was a squared term there, then we'd have to use a quadratic formula to solve. But because it's just linear, it's nice and easy, so what we do is we bring the 60 other side, it's positive on the right-hand side, so it's negative on the left-hand side. So negative 6 equals negative 2 over x. And then we bring that negative 2 
from the uh, numerator on the right hand side to the denominator on the left hand side. So it's negative 6 on negative 2 equals x. And therefore, x equals positive 3 because a negative divided by a negative makes a positive. Double negative rule. Okay, so from this we know that there is a stationary point at x equals 3. But we want to know what it is, and let's pretend I didn't give the answer away by drawing it up before, but it could be a minima, it could be a maxima, it could be a horizontal inflection. The way we're able to work it out is we're able to put this value, a value less than 3, into our derivative and work out if it's negative, and that will tell us a bit about the slope. So let's see, what, a value less than 3. A value less than 3 is 2, right? Uh, 2 is less than 3? Yeah, that's correct. That's good. So we have negative 2 times by 2, that's going to make negative 4. Negative 4 plus 6 is going to be equal to 2. So therefore, when x is less than 3, we have a positive dy dx. And we need to check the other one. Let's put in a value more than 3. 4. 4 is greater than 3. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Plus 6 is negative 2. So therefore, our dy over dx, and again, we're plugging these values back into our dy over dx, because if it's positive, it means it's increasing. If it's negative, it means it's decreasing, because it tells us about the slope. But when it's greater than 3, we have a negative dy over dx. And that means that because a positive dy over dx means our uh, slope's increasing, right? And our uh, negative dy over dx means that our slope is obviously going to be greater, uh, that is going to be a negative dy over dx means our slope is decreasing. We can draw a sine diagram based on this for our function. So we have 3 as being the top, uh, as being our turning point there, and we have positive on that side and a negative on that side. And so because it's changing, we know that that is obviously going to be a maxima because it's increasing and then decreasing. So we've just proved that it's maxima there. And therefore, when x is less than 3, it's obviously going to be increasing, isn't it? Because of the shape of this parabola. Positive slope here, negative there. Therefore, it's increasing there, decreasing there. And therefore, x is greater than 3. It's going to be a decreasing slope. And so we've found those intervals. We set the derivative to 0 to be able to find out what's happening to the slope. And we surveyed the slope at points either side of where the derivative is zero. There we go. There's a look at curve properties. First video. More parts coming soon. Hopefully that helped. Thank you.